the real pattern we see in a lot of the buffalo jumps, certainly in southern Alberta and uh, northern Montana, is this great intensification around 1800, 2000 years ago. That there's just a fluorescence of the use of these sites. Head Smash Inn is a perfect example of that. So something's going on. A number of sites were used before that. Some were not. You know, quite a few jumps just really start around 1800, and there's nothing in them earlier than that. Other jumps, like Head Smash Inn, have, have use before that, but it's, it's definitely more sporadic. And then suddenly there's this real intensification. I think that's the where Kehoe talked about that idea of a, this kind of industrialization yeah. of the buffalo jumping. I'm just wondering what you... Th you have some theories or some ideas on what was hap what what caused that or what what are we seeing there 2000 years ago is there a change in northern plains uh, trading patterns or are there more people to feed or is it just this they had mastered this now that they're uh, sort of walking away from other communal hunting techniques and this has become the favor you got some ideas on that well yeah it's um, well one way i like to look at it is see what the changes in in say in down waterton glacier because we're talking about the same people you know, ancestors of the pig and Picani. And there you you really see, you know, prior to about that time, there are bands who are, they're there all year round. You know, they're up on top in the summer and they're down on the bottoms in the winter and, you know, the whole thing's complete and they're going back and forth across the mountains to the west side. And then right around that time, they begin to shift. All of a sudden, the Alpines totally, you know, becomes abandoned. It becomes decreased in use. And then by a thousand years ago, there's no arrowheads in the Alpines. Yeah. And of course there's no Kootenai because they're not only coming over in the winter anyways, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and the fisheries have been. We had this wonderful fishery on, on the lakes that was used from, no, oh, 9,000 years ago, right up until about 2,000, 1,200, you know, and then it's just abandoned. Mm -hmm. Well, the time you use that fishery, it's the fall fishery for lake trout, eh? Uh, and that's, it's abandoned. So obviously they are shifting to places like this for ball hunting. And also at the same time, they've got some new religion going on, the Sundance, mm -hmm. which focuses uh, on a necessity to go up the Sweetgrass Hills. Because that's where you know the origin stories come from and that's traditionally where they had their dances prior to the reservation period. And so you know you begin to get a total reorientation of the settlement pattern, eh? And uh, because of a, a, you know, an imperative that we have to Sundance out there. And at the same time, as you said, you know, they've really got this technique down mm -hmm. really well to, you know, massive. And of course, to make these work, you've got to have a lot of people. Yeah. So you get a big change all going on. But even given that, I think there's, uh, there's some changes in trade and neighboring folks that are important. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the lithics, the tool stones from here, or any of our buffalo jumps, or our winter camps, or summer camps, up to 60 to 80 percent of all your stone comes in central and southern Montana. Doesn't matter whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. So obviously, you know, there's a very strong connection up and down, you know, all the way from Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Trading, exchanging, moving, doing what else. And, and so, the one question you might ask is, well, are they, you know, because they seem to be getting excess meat, right? Yeah. Excess production here for the size of the population, you know, where are they taking dry meat and pemmican down to the people in southern Montana who were the ancestors of the Arapaho, mm -hmm. not the Blackfoot, mm -hmm. and trading that to them to access obsidian and high quality tool stone. Right. You know, what was the mechanism of, you know, right. of that? Yeah. Because just like the buffalo jumps being associated with traditional bands and rights, like this one, one of the two bands here was the Grease Melters. I can't remember them. Yeah. What's the other one? Uh, Buffalo Fat. Buffalo Fat? Grease Melters, anyway, yeah. two, you know, two of the bands associated with this. You know, the, for, for what little information we have on quarries, which is not much, is that they, the traditional bands associated with those quarries, so they had the traditional rights. So you just couldn't walk in there and mine your rock like we've unfortunately assumed it. Right. Or just like you can't walk in here and jump your buffalo, right? Yeah you got to go through it. So maybe there's an exchange system going on yeah. that way. But more importantly, I think that there was something really going on, which you've talked about, is that they were trading this stuff down the Missouri River into Cahokia, yeah. you know, into the big Miss Mississippian populations yeah. down there. I think it's a real possibility. And what they're getting back is, unfortunately, as yet, we haven't found it in the record right. because it's probably a very, uh, one of them is tobacco. Right. And one was religion. The, right. That's where the sun dance 
the Sundance part of the Sundance, the scarification and the sun focusing, that's where it comes out of. It's, it's pretty clear now that's where that all comes from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just haven't found the, the physical evidence. Well, we have. The, the, the shell masks from the, the West View right, are, we are part that. of that. And it could be things are coming back that were not physical. Well, that, they're not physical. Yeah. 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 That don't last in the they archaeological record. They don't last record. in the archaeological record. Yeah. But, but, you know, every once in a while you find, you know, people have found these caches of oh, arrowheads, which are clearly Mississippian arrowheads and things. They yes. usually plowed up or they're sitting in somebody's tobacco can. Yeah. And, uh, hey, why not? Yeah. You know? Well, we have good evidence of the trade of, of from pretty distant regions into the Cahokia area, northern Minnesota, yeah. no, the northern states. Why northern not? Plains, why yeah. not here? You know, yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah.